morning and welcome to worship. Good morning. Good morning. Special welcome to those of you who are visiting or returning after a while. It's a great joy to have you with us this morning. As we gather this morning, may the Spirit of the Lord work within us. As we gather, may we glorify the Lord. And as our hearts begin to worship, may we be blessed because we can. We begin our worship this morning by singing hymn number 401. Thank you. 
faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Indeed, by faith, our ancestors received approval. By faith, we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was made from things that are not visible. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to set out for a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he set out, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he stayed for a time in the land he had been promised, as in a foreign land, living in tents, as did Isaac and Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked forward to the city that has foundation, whose architect and builder is God, by faith he received power of procreation, even though he was too old, and Sarah herself was barren, because he considered him faithful who had promised. Therefore, from one person, and this one as good as dead, descendants were born, as many as the stars of heaven, and as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. All of these died in faith without having received the promises but from a distance they saw and greeted them. They confessed that they were strangers and foreigners on the earth, for people who speak in this way make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of the land that they had left behind, they would have had an opportunity to return. But as it is, they desired a better country, that is, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God. Indeed, he has prepared a city for them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. 
Sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out an unfailing treasure in heaven, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Be dressed for action and have your lamps lit. Be like those who are waiting for their master to return from the wedding banquet so that they might open the door for him as soon as he comes and knocks. Blessed are those slaves whom the master finds alert when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will fasten his belt and have them sit down to eat, and he will come and serve them. If he comes during the middle of the night or near dawn and finds them so, blessed are those slaves. But know this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord May be we live in a world where there are lots of things to worry about or be afraid of. We're still dealing with COVID. Even though it has become more of something that we just need to live with and not the deadly scourge it was two years ago. But there's so much stuff to worry about, fear. Serious stuff like inflation, illegal immigration, monkeypox, climate change, droughts, war, school shootings, etc. And mundane stuff like your cable going out, or the internet going down, or losing your smartphone, etc. I could go on. But there's no time for that. Let's just say that there seems to be more than enough stuff going on to make us sick with fear and worry. But this isn't new. This isn't any worse than times in the past. In the 1950s, a group called the Kingston Trio performed a satirical song written by one Sheldon Harnick called The Merry Minuet. It's dated, but sadly not as dated as we might wish. It goes like this. They're rioting in Africa. Da, 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 da. They're starving in Spain. Da, 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 da. There's hurricanes in Florida. Da, 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 da. And Texas needs rain. Da, 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 da. The whole world is festering with unhappy souls. The French hate the Germans. The Germans hate the Poles. Italians hate Yugoslav. South Africans hate the Dutch. And I don't like anybody very much. <laughs> but we can be tranquil and thankful and proud. For man's been endowed with a mushroom-shaped cloud. And we know for certain that some lovely day, someone will set the spark off, and we will all be blown away. Da, 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 da. They're rioting in Africa. Da, 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 da. There's strife in Iran. Da, 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 da. What nature doesn't do to us Da, 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 will be done by our fellow man. Cheery little ditty, isn't it? <laughs> Keep one thing in mind, though. <coughs> this song is almost 70 years old, and yet here we are, not blown away. But many, if not all of us, are still worried and fearful of many things. However, when we look at today's reading, 
there's hope. In the reading from Genesis, we hear, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. What was Abram afraid of? Well, the quote begins, after these things. So let's look at these things that came before. In chapter 14, we read that four eastern kings led their armies to attack four other kingdoms. And one of those other kingdoms was Sodom, where Abraham's nephew Lot was living. Well, the four attacking kings won handily, and among the captives they took away was Lot. When Abram found out, he took his own army of 318 trained men and chased after the attackers, caught them, routed them, and returned with Lot and all of the people and possessions that they had taken. In gratitude for Abram's victory, Melchizedek, the king of Salem, which is what Jerusalem was known in those days, who was also a priest of the Most High God, gave him a blessing. And the king of Sodom asked only that his people be returned, but that Abram could keep all of the possessions. Now, in so many words, Abram refused the possessions. He had sworn an oath to God not to take them. And he didn't want the king of Sodom claiming that he had made Abram rich. So perhaps Abram was afraid of retaliation by those he had defeated. And perhaps he was also fearful that the king of Sodom might be angry over his refusal of the king's gift. But it is also apparent that Abraham was concerned about the promise God had made to him about making his descendants a great nation. He and Sarai had grown old and remained childless. His only heir appeared to be the slave who was managing Abram's household. So it appears that Abram felt he had a lot to be afraid and to worry about in spite of God's assurances. And so it is with us. So many things to worry about and fear. But I said, today's readings offer hope. Today's gospel reading from Luke 12 starts at verse 32 and begins, Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Do not be afraid, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Twice today, we hear the words, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Now, sometimes the gospel readings from one Sunday to the next are consecutive, but this is not one of those times. So, listen to the verses that precede today's gospel reading. This is Luke 12, chapter, uh, uh, verses 22 through 31. Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothing. Consider the ravens. They neither sow nor reap. They have neither storehouse nor barn, and yet God feeds them. But how much more valuable are you than the birds? And which of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your span of life? If then you are not able to do so small a thing as that, why do you worry about the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They neither toil nor spin. Yet I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like any one of these. But if God so clothes the clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not keep seeking what you are to eat and what you are to drink, 
and do not keep worrying. For it is the nations of the world that seek all of these things, and your Father knows that you need them. Instead, seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Now the very next thing he says is the beginning of today's gospel reading. Do not be afraid, little flock. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. We're being given the kingdom. We don't have to earn it. We don't have to conquer it. We don't have to worry about or be afraid that we won't get it. God is giving it to us. And it's so much better than all of the stuff we have. Stuff. All our possessions. It's just stuff. The late George Carlin of irreverent comic fame had a whole routine on stuff. And here's a relevant sample. That's all you need in life. A little place for your stuff. That's all your house is. A place to keep your stuff. If you didn't have so much stuff, you wouldn't need a house. You could just walk around all the time. A house is just a pile of stuff with a cover on it. Now there's more than that, but I can't do it justice. Google it. It's very funny and very perceptive. So all of our possessions, all of our money, it's just that. Stuff. In the opera Porgy and Bess, Porgy sings, I Got Plenty of Nothing. At one point he sings, the folks with plenty of plenty, they got a lock on the door, afraid somebody's going to rob them when they're out for making war. Yes, much of what troubles us is the effort needed to obtain and maintain a comfortable existence. Remember last week's gospel reading? It ended with the parable of the rich man who has too much stuff for his existing barns. So he tears them down and builds newer and bigger ones. What happens? Right after he thinks he has succeeded in protecting his stuff, he dies. God says to him, you fool, this very night, your life is being demanded of you and the things you have prepared, whose will they be? can't take it with you. It reminds me of this very wealthy old man who married this very young woman. And in the prenup, he has her agree that upon his death, she will liquidate all his assets and take the cash and put it in the coffin with him. <laughs> well, he dies, and at his gravesite is the lawyer and his widow. And the lawyer asks her, well, did you follow his instructions? And she says, well, yes, I did. I liquidated all his assets. But you know, all of that cash wouldn't fit in his coffin. So I wrote him a check. <laughs> you can't take it with you. Today we heard Jesus say, sell your possessions and give alms. Make purses for yourselves that do not wear out, an unfailing treasure in heaven. Where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. And he goes on to tell us what we are to be. We are to be prepared. To be ready for the coming of the Son of Man. That's the important thing. Not all of our stuff not even our very earthly existence. We are to pay attention to the unexpected. God comes to us in many ways, and many of the ways he comes to us are not expected. Wisdom can come to us from George Carl, or Porgy and Bess, or many other surprising sources. One of the greatest pieces of wisdom I've ever done, 
came to me while I was in the Navy. I was in a bar in some port or other, I don't remember exactly where. And as I was sitting there, I looked up over the bar, and there was this sign that said, don't worry about life, you're not gonna get out of it alive anyway. <laughs> as God said to Abram, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. And as Jesus said to us today, do not be afraid, little one. It is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. wonderful words. I invite you to stand as you are able, as we have found what we believe according to the Nicene Creed, as printed on page 5 of our bulletins. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, ruling all things for me, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, which was crucified and upon his fire, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom from I am ready. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. of the people. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the love which passes ceaselessly between the Father and the Son in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit may renew and deepen the life of each Christian and draw us all into your unending life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church, especially Justin the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Greg, our bishop, Samuel and Janice, our priests, Charlie, our deacon, and all other ministers may be to us effective examples in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. That those who shall choose a bishop to succeed our retiring bishop may be guided by the Holy Spirit to elect a faithful pastor who shall care for your people and equip us for our ministries. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That our parish family, our clergy, our vestry and ministry team leaders, our students, teachers, tutors, ministry partners, and all our members and friends may grow deeper in unity and love for one another and bear abundant fruits of the Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That a new birth of peace may come among all human families and nations, especially Ukraine, the Democratic Republic of Congo, Haiti, and other areas where there is turmoil, and that hatred, violence, and war may cease. Renew the spirit of hope in every human society and nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations, 
especially Joe, our president, and governors of states, especially Ron, our governor, mayors of cities, members of Congress, the judiciary, and all in authority may strive for justice, peace, and the dignity of every human being. Lord, in your mercy, that all who are afflicted and oppressed, refugees, the homeless, the hungry, prisoners, and others, may be freed from oppression and your human needs restored. Give them their share of the dignity you confer on all your children. Lord, in your mercy, that the victims of the floods in Kentucky and other natural disasters may know the comfort that comes from you alone, and that there will be sufficient resources to help with relief and rebuilding efforts. Lord, in your mercy, that the sick and suffering, especially Floyd, Jacob, Berg, Wayne, Scott, Janet, Burns, Mariama, Charlotte, Frankie, Leo, Deborah, Liz, Montana, those listed in our bulletin, and all who care for them may be restored to wholeness and strength. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That those who are celebrating their birthdays this week, especially John, Vicki, Karen, Arthur, and others, and those celebrating their anniversaries, especially Carol and Jerry, Cheryl and George, and others, Continue to grow in wisdom and grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That we and all whose lives are linked to ours, our families, friends, and neighbors, being protected and free from anxiety, may live in joy, peace, and health. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. At this point, we may add other intercession or thanksgiving, either silently or aloud. Precious God, whom Jesus called Abba, Father, accept our prayers this day. By the inner workings of your spirit, deepen our communion with you, the source and goal of our life. And make us more and more signs of your enduring love. This we pray through Christ, who lives and works with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Favor that you tell us your name 
So when we meet the next time, uh, we, we may be able to know your name. So if you're visiting for the first time and you don't mind, we would love to hear your voice and telling us your name and where you're visiting from. I'm Katie, and we're visiting from Washington. And it's Alexi. Lexi and Katie visiting from. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? Thank you. I wish to call your attention to uh, the announcements in the bulletin. Some of them are very familiar, others are new. Uh, the familiar one is that following the service, we are all invited to the parish hall for a time of fellowship and swallowship. Lots of refreshments. There are a lot of refreshments. Please join us for that if you are able. Our second is that this coming Friday at 5 p.m., five to seven, we'll have a newcomer gathering. A newcomer gathering is something we try to do at least quarterly to welcome uh, those who have joined us during that quarter and uh, be able to share with them a little more about uh, what it is like to, to be a belonger here, uh, to belong to Holy Trinity. Uh, the, Let's get a little more about our mission, uh, our vision, our priorities, the things that we truly care about. But also it presents an opportunity to ask any questions you may have about any topic. Uh, the, the, the gathering will begin with a meal and then there will be a brief presentation and some question and answer. Opportunity. So if you are new, uh, relatively new, or relatively new, and you've never been to such a gathering, and you may have questions of, uh, of me or anybody else, please come to that, and we'll be honored to have you with us. Uh, school golf benefit, sign up, as you know, uh, the golf uh, tournament is our biggest fundraiser. It happened the last Saturday of October and uh, this year it will be on October 29th. We have been trying to take it further. It has been very successful in the past and we want to grow, uh, to grow it. So we are putting more energy and starting preparations early. So there they are sign-up sheets in the, fellow, in the parish hall. Uh, if you can help in one way or the other, uh, look at the sign-up sheets. You'll see the, the people needed, people to work at the event. But also, I think several other things like recruiting, uh, how you would recruit uh, golfers. And it's not just golfers, but Ask people to donate. If somebody doesn't go off like I don't, uh, the, then there's an opportunity to donate, uh, to donate online. There are many ways to contribute to this, and we hope that all of us will play a role in one way or the other, even if it means uh, telling your friend who loves to go off that here is an opportunity to, to change someone's life by having a good day at golf. There are handouts, I think, that were distributed that say a lot more about the event. So thank you for those who are already working hard to make this a success. I think that's it for now. The Holy Hackers. The Holy Hackers is an, uh, 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 a golf outing that we have every second Saturday of the month. It's a very exciting event. If you've never been to it and you like golfing, uh, please uh, 
talk to Pat. There are many people here who normally go. Barbara is always there. <laughs> Randy and Debbie are always there and many others. It's quite exciting. And if you don't go off, you can join them at lunch around 11 o'clock. The address, I think, is here. Pembroke Fairways Clubhouse. I think that's it. Any other announcements, questions? Walk in love as Christ loved us and offered himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. <laughs>
for the blessings of our lives, for his assurance to us and his encouragement not to be afraid, but more so in intercession on behalf of those who are struggling, those who are fearful about the future, that they may hear God's voice of reassurance in the midst of their struggles. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For you are the source of light and life. You made us in your image and called us to new life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with the angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. <laughs> sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. The night was handed over to suffering and death. Our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when I have given thanks to you, God, he broke it. And gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. At the supper, he took the cup of wine. And when I had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is died, Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, before your people, by the blood of your Son, the holy food and, and drink of new and unending life. <coughs> Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him, with him, and in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours. Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has told us, we are born to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And let us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For mine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
Hallelujah, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the peace. Hallelujah. Gifts of God for the people of God. Thank you. And remember that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen.
Starting to page 11, let us pray together. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. And you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever to live in the life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.